Okay, so this is where we pull all this board out now. So luckily, most of these connectors which should fit straight over onto the duet. But there might be a few little foibles along the way. Snip that off because that isn't Z, it's X. So at least I'll know these are all labeled correctly. Yep. Let's turn it on fans. Okay, so put that safely out of the way. So will we do it? Will anything line up on the duet board? What are we going to get? Be nice if it did. to do is insulate these well, they are anodized uh, by the looks of it that looks like it's anodized or maybe powder coated aluminium but it won't take much to scratch something and short one of these pins to hold the board. It'd be better if there was more than one but it's not really going to be moving around a lot once it's in. And one of these once it's torqued up will probably just hold it in place. I'm not sure which. I think we'll put that in at the end because it's going to be a bit difficult to get some of the connectors and I don't think we want to put it in that way either. Probably want to... Oh, I might be lucky. Mm. Yeah, I think to be honest, it's going to want to go somewhere like this. Then we can at least get all the connectors on the board. Right, so this Let's start getting these sorted. So this is your power in. So power in on a duet Wi-Fi is that way around. to make sure yeah so it's not marked well on the uh, to do it board so I'm just going to mark that one as positive and actually it's positive negative there 
We went for a 24 volt out the heated bed, it's the other way around. Positives. That's positive there and it's positive on that one. So mm -hmm. you get them wrong and you you're not gonna have a good day. on fans quite handy having that duet over there actually for reference it's easy to get these the wrong way around and to be honest the duet boards are pretty good they've, they've got a lot of uh, circuit protection on there but yeah not absolutely foolproof Right, so this is some fans, so the always on fans are these, and the positive is that side. So this is going to be, these will go on actually, I don't, luckily I don't have to swap all the things over. Fortunately it would be nicer if it was that way around, but they're not. Could swap the pins, but in actual fact these will go over and you just force that little plastic tab at the back a little bit and they you know they stay on really well so they don't they don't come off unless you know you really pull it on the cable so that's the always on fan so we double check the voltage that way around yes it is uh, let's put the bed heater in now Be interesting i don't really know what the power output of that other board is and how much current it will flow to the heated bed um, well, they are not coming out oh, that one's screwed I wonder whether this will heat the bed up faster than uh, the other printer. Could have done back to back tests, but I'm not that bothered. Because it's this board is staying in. So positive, positive, negative, negative, positive, just the way it is. Right, what's next? Let's get the motors on. So we've got Z. So when you only have a single Z, you have to. So I'm actually interested, who knows whether these are going to match the drive pins on here, normally they do, but we'll see. Not one to one there. Uh, and yeah, when you've got a single Z, you need to put two jumpers across there. Fire box lying around. So as you can see with the duets, you get all these bits, these heat sinks, which will stick on in a bit. You get these jumpers.
Uh, Motors, shall we? Uh, so this, this, this is X. So the way these go is extruder or extruder one, X Y Z one Z two. So X is here. X, Y, and Z, power in, heated bed. So end stops. Now the, the way the duet end stops are wired, I don't think these are gonna work. If we can find them, they work. So that's the Y. That's the Z, so that's X. I can't remember on the journal, I'll just check over it. So the way the end stops work, um, let me just check. Just remember. Yeah, so it's X, Y, and Z end stops. That's these. Yeah, so the way they work is on a duet, it needs to be the first and the third pin on each one. So I'm just going to have to modify these connectors slightly. It's pretty straightforward, just get a, uh, a pin, push it out and move it over. So I'll just do that. And I think. We'll just give it a little power on and see what's see what's going on, uh, and see if any of the motor drives actually work. Because the wires, all the things might need moving around. This is Y and stop. Shove, shove these out. Push them out. And put it in the next one. Like that. Hasn't got one on his, his X. Sometimes you just need to check that these go back in properly, actually seat and don't just push out. When you try and put them over a pin, which can happen.
I might as well stick this. Well, it's not going to have a Z end stock because we're going to be using the BL touch. Uh, so I won't bother wiring that one in. Uh, what else have we got? We've got the part cooling fan. And we've got the always on hot end heat sink cooling fan. So let's find those. So easy way to remember is the park cooling fan has this dual dual wire to it. So again we'll stick that on. So you have two always on fans here. We'll stick that on there and that one. On there. There we go. I think you've got kind of those two or three uh, pulse width modulated fan outputs. So probably connected to the middle one, I think. I'll have to configure that in the firmware, but it's just well, let's just get that on. Do it. Let's go on. Let's keep it tight with these blocky connectors. Right, so the only thing that we haven't connected is the Z limit, and this is the so we've got the thermistor for the bed. Can't remember which one's which now. This black was the thermistor for the bed. Found it. Bed thermistor is this one over here. Logically located next to the bed power. Um, last one, the thermistor for the hot end and the hot end itself. So I'll just just can't quite remember, so it goes in one of these, can't remember which one it is, and then that's the thermistor, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it might be one of these, just can't, can't quite remember, I'll have to check in a minute. But that's enough wiring to be able to start to get the thing and get the motion system working, and then we'll come back and do the hot end at the, at the, at the end. Let's get rid of these screws. We'll just leave it up right for a second. Power on. The Z limit we might probably won't use anymore, so let's just double check one last time. Positive power, yeah, yeah. And so that looks good. There we go. So I've already configured this board in the past, so it's trying to connect to my Wi Fi network now and it's connected. That's great. Um, the always on fans, they're all being driven, as is the hot end always on fans. Um, so now it's just a case of setting up the duet board uh, config file to match the, uh, the the settings of accelerations, jerk, and speeds, and end stop configuration, all that malarkey, so that it actually drives it properly. Uh, and then we'll fit a BL touch, and we're pretty much done. Okay, so that's it's not finished, but it's it's getting there. Uh, the end stops for the x-axis work correctly, so I'll just show you that working now. So if we click Home X, which I'll do that, and we'll can have a look at the motion on the printer. So I just move the motor, move to there. So I'll click. Home X. 
bed goes down a little bit. There we go, and it should hit the X stop in a sec. Perfect. So if we try Y, I'll just move X back to the middle. Right, so if we do a home Y now, it's, it should go towards the back of the bed um, and hit the limit switch at the top. So let's see, so let's click home Y. There we go, so I'm expecting it to hit the limit switch. Excellent. Um, and if we do a home X, um, not sure, I definitely want to home it when it's at the Y limit, so I'm just going to whack it back a little bit. There we go, and that's do a home X. Okay. So that's good. So actually, so the individual home X and home Y in system config work, uh, the home all is going to. Uh, the way I think I've got it is it actually has the X and Y code in the home all, so I'm just going to have to correct that so that when we do a home all, it doesn't do it all wrong as it was doing before. Um, right, so at this point, um, I could try doing a home Z, uh, but I can't remember where I've configured, plugged the end, I don't think I plugged the Z stop in. So, uh, yeah, so what we need to do now is fit the BL touch so we can get Z all working and have you know uh, mesh bed probing and all that sort of stuff done and then it's ready to print there we go try Y it, I'm pretty sure it's going to go the wrong way so I need to define where the limit switch is whether it's at the minimum or the maximum extent of travel so home Y yeah it goes the wrong way Because the limit switch, if I can remember, is here for Y. So we'll sort that out. Okay, so I'm going to fit this 3D touch. I think this was a GTEC one. It was, it was off eBay. Um, comes with a long wire uh, and a short wire. Uh, a few connector blocks. Um, and it, you know, it's a bit like a bit like this one really this one's seen a little bit better days on the casing got a little bit too close to the hot end but it works fine um, unfortunately which is quite helpful if you look around the back it does tell you ground 5 volt signal which is the signal to deploy your stolar probe and then the black and white on our ground again and whether the Z's been activated or not so they're the logic signals for the probe yeah, so that's quite useful because um, on, on these it doesn't really tell you um, but the way it's split if we can find the end of the cable so I like to split these slightly differently and uh, so I have to use the little pin trick and push the pins out and swap them between the connectors but I like to use this two pin one uh, for power, I think. Is that the way I do it? Uh, yep, plus five volts on ground. Um, and then I, this one, I end up splitting and using. using uh, let me get this right again. Yeah, so cut, cut the power wire, take the power wires, put them in there, put the signal wires, put them in there. So this one is basically it's all signal stuff, and that one's the power. Uh, and the power goes onto the duet quite nicely because the two pins are next to each other that we use on the expansion connector. Um, the signal wires uh, and the probe, uh, they need, need basically need splitting at this end and it goes to a two and a one. But yeah, we'll see when you look at the board. So that's the short wire that it comes with, which is way too short. Uh, this is so we've got the long wire, so I'm gonna have to work out where to mount that later. Might mount it on the maybe on the front somewhere, like what well, was on the front? It's, it's, now, it's now the back because this is now the coordinate system with a duet is effectively this is zero in Y, zero in X, whereas 
this would be 200 and something in Y, 220 in Y, and 0 in X if you're using the original board. Anyway, I'm going to have to work out where to mount this, but there's enough cable on here to run it. Probably just cable tie it to this rather than try and stick it inside it and run it around the back and down to the bottom. So I'll work out where to mount it later, but we'll see the connections first. Okay, so I've split the ends of these connectors. I've used the pin trick to lift the little little plastic flap up and be able to pull the pins out and swap them around. I've cut the three into a one. And the reason why is, so the power on this expansion connector is what we've got to use. The power is there. I'll just put it on and then show you. torch on I think. Just bear with me. So yeah, so this expansion connector is plus five volts and ground at there, so that's a nice way of breaking out that. The signal wire and um, we'll have to go back and check the config we're gonna put on pin eight. This is one, two uh yeah so that's I'm just double check. I think I'm pretty sure that's right. Um, I'll just check the the order. Yep. So got let's just get these wires in focus. So yes, yeah, so that's pin one is five volts. Pin two is ground, and then we want. Pin so that's two, four, six, pin eight. I'll just put that on. Pin eight is going to be used to control the duet, and then these last two go over to the Z Pro connection here. See, it says probe on the board and it's the last two connections uh, we might get away with it just by doing it a bit of a cheapy way of doing it but we'll just push these straight over the right way so white no, other way around white is the signal black is the ground signal is on that pin ground is on that pin okay so you've basically got your probe signal going there you got your five volt supply coming in, five volts on red, ground on green, and the orange wire is the probe deploy or stow command. Uh, so we need to check the duet config to make sure it's set up because you have to disable one of the pulse width modulated outputs because these are used normally for heaters. Tell it not to be a heater anymore and give it to control to the probe. Um, it might be already set up in the config file, I'm not sure. So what we can do, we can just do a little little check that this works now. I hold it in my hand and flick the power. Double check the wires right around because these things, if you get the five volts and ground wrong for the supply, I think you pretty much wreck it straight away. Um, so let's double check, let's turn it on, see what happens. Yep, that's all good. Happy with that. There you go, Mike. So it's pretty much done now, mate. Uh, here is uh, home running home all from the duet duet GUI home all. That's the Z axis noise. Go. 
I'll just run a mesh probe now, bed probe. So you can see, you, can, it's not even, you can't even hear it, except for the Z-axis. Super quiet. Not bad, really. For well, it's got all the uh, got, it's got the plastic sides on as well. Uh, I've not put the doors on yet. Some doors on the front. <laughs> a, a clone duet at sixty odd quid, and a printer with all the enclosure for two uh, two hundred four so three hundred quid. Not bad, really. And it's got a two hundred twenty odd build height, which might be a bit more actually. I've not actually tried it. So that's the that's the noise level of this printer, mate. It's super quiet, absolutely super quiet. <laughs> 